How's it going guys? I'm excited about this video. I want to talk to you about some of the number one businesses I would start if I was starting a new business today. Let's talk about it. So the first business that I would start today if I was starting a very new business in the Philippines would be something related to Airbnb. Now there's a couple of different models when it comes to Airbnb. The first one would be if you bought your own place and then you leased it out on Airbnb. The second one would be if you leased something from another uh, person that owned a place and then you were to sublease it on Airbnb. So obviously there's pros and cons to each one of those. One of the advantages obviously of buying your own place is then other people are paying it off for you and you are making some profit while they're paying it off for you. The advantages to subleasing a place is obviously it's a lot lower investment initially and then you can take some of the profits from that and you can reinvest that into some properties that you own if you wish. Definitely look at the strengths and weaknesses of this business model. There's a million videos on YouTube about it. And one of the most important things to look out for is whether you buy a place or you sublease a place to make sure that it will be okay for you to continue selling on Airbnb and make sure that there's some way to get out of the contract if that's not the case. There's some very popular places here in Cebu City where I live, for example, Solanea, it was always a pretty hot spot to get a condo from and now they say only long-term people are able to lease on Airbnb so you could imagine for the people that were selling out their places on Airbnb that lived in that place all of a sudden overnight people couldn't stay there for just a day or two days or a week or even a month but they have to stay there for months to be able to meet the policies of that condo. So do your due diligence, but I think this is just a great way to leverage property, either that you own or that somebody else owns to make a living. Now, we have recently started down this road ourselves, and we also have a business where we're helping others to manage their Airbnb properties. So that means that we will talk to guests. That means that if they have any questions or emergencies, we'll be there to help out with them. All of the cleaning and things like that we will take care of. And so if you are interested in getting some help with that, feel free to reach out. My contact info is below. Business two. If I were starting a business today in the Philippines, a second business that I would look at really seriously is anything expensive. Now, what do I mean? That's kind of a general way to put it. But what I mean is that I would be looking at starting something that's really high end, that only people that have a lot of money would be able to spend money on. So if you live in a bigger city like Manila, there's a lot of high end restaurants, spas, golf courses, whatever, you name it, anything that costs a lot. But where I live here in Cebu City and a lot of other regional places in the Philippines, there's a total lack of high-end services and products for people that have a bit more money. And I know that this probably will sound counterintuitive to so many of you that think, uh, hey buddy, did you forget you live in the Philippines? It's a developing country. Nope. I didn't forget that. In the Philippines, there is a ton of money, but sadly, it is just concentrated in too few hands. But for those that have the hands to reach out with a wallet of cash, there is so much opportunity to be able to provide high-end services and products, experiences to people that have the money. Third type of business that I would look at if I was starting a new business in the Philippines today would be importing. Now make sure and check out this video that uh, I have here or here or wherever the editor is kind enough to put it and check out this video with Dave. He's been successful with it here and it's really been an inspiration to myself and others. So many people think of exporting and or selling stuff on Amazon or 
different things like that. And I think that there's amazing opportunity here to look at importing as a business as well. Now with all of these businesses, it goes without saying, you got to check the local laws. You got to make sure that it is legal to sell and have the type of business that you're having here. But uh, importing is definitely another great opportunity. There's just so many things here that people would enjoy having or that people are already importing and just really robbing people with the prices. Sometimes I am absolutely shocked at the profit margins that people are ripping people off for that are already importing stuff here. And listen, I am the first one that wants to make a big profit margin and to do well on anything that I'm doing in business, but some things are literally twice the cost that they would cost me in America here. And a lot of it is the same stuff being shipped from China. So it's a lot closer to ship it over here to the Philippines than it is to the US. So there's just no reason something should be so expensive in the Philippines. So importing, I think, is a great opportunity. And the last type of business that I would start in the Philippines if I was getting going today is an online type of business. Again, I know that's super general because there's just five trillion different opportunities of stuff you could sell online, all are not equal. The kinds of businesses that excite me online is the type of stuff that you do once and then you could sell a million times. So for example, I am putting together some digital courses. I'm gonna give all of my best knowledge on different topics and then I will sell those as courses. There's other opportunities, of course, in e-commerce, building a website, putting products on it, selling it to a great target market. There's other things like membership sites where you have a lot of valuable information. People get some of it for free. People have to pay for the rest of it and on and on. Affiliate marketing sites, too many opportunities to mention here. So why do I like online businesses? Because the overhead is just so incredibly low. You don't need to pay for an office space. You could use your home internet, all those type of things. It just really reduces your overhead costs, which makes it a lot less risky. And there's just so many different opportunities of what you could do online. So there's a million other possibilities of businesses here in the Philippines. I know so many people will talk about how running a business in the Philippines is stupid. And let me let you in on a little secret. Starting a business anywhere is stupid. You gotta be stupid to start a business. But if you are, the Philippines is really no more stupid than any other place. Of course, I'm saying that a little bit tongue in cheek, but a little serious. Businesses are risky. You gotta be willing to Give it a shot and know that you might fail and then you just keep trying, trying, trying again till you are a success. So do you need help starting a business? I would love to help out. Check out my email in the comment below. Reach out to me on Facebook. Anything I could do to help. I really uh, just love helping fellow entrepreneurs or people wanting to explore starting a business. As always guys, subscribe and thank you for taking the time to watch. See you later.